Hi. I have a. I I have I I just can't resist making this next video because it's just too, it's too perfectly positioned. Um. It it just it it so cleanly lays out the ridiculous nature of the speculator community and what they what they have to deal with all the time, and why it's endlessly fascinating to me to watch them deal with their with their own uh, <laughs> claims of what the Bible says and what the newspaper says. And it's constantly, I, I just, I just can't even believe it, it continues on. It just, I would urge people, I'm, I'm not going to make fun of this video. I'm not going to make fun of it. I'm going to point out the error in it. It's really not funny at all. It's just, it's, it's sad. It shows that Christians treat these things with um, too much, uh, uh, too much of an entertainment thing. Um, they don't take it seriously. They don't. Um, <laughs> I just don't even know what else to say. It's it's so pointless what people do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna point out why I think that. Um, we're gonna walk through what Barry Scarborough here says in his latest video. I mean, he's been doing videos for four or five years now, telling everybody that we can know when the time frame is of the rapture. Indeed, we should know the time frame of the rapture. We will know the time frame of the rapture, and and it's right it's right around the corner. It's coming up any any second now. It's really soon. It's we can know, and here's proof, and blah blah blah. And then time passes, and no rapture. And he's right back at it again, saying the same things again, just like all the other guys. Um, anyway, I'm going to play what he says. I'll respond to it um, one item at a time. I wanted to, to intelligently discuss from prophecy the time frame that I believe that we're in. Now this is this is this is right at the moment where most people start going awry. I just saw I just saw a post from a brother that's like, okay, well then it ha you know, then it's, you know, Christ was crucified here and add this to this and therefore it has to be dot dot dot. Doesn't has to doesn't have to be anything. Okay. First off, God is the sovereign Lord and he is in control in the time of his return. I do believe as I've said many times before, Hebrews 10.25, Revelation 3.3, 1 Thessalonians chapters 4 and 5, all lead us to the fact that we will know the time frame, the season of his coming. Well, they okay, let's recap what he just said. He just said that God is in control of the time of his return. You can't know the exact time. And Barry has said multiple times, that pinpointing an exact time and day is is wrong. It's a bad idea. I I agree, <laughs> but I also think he does the same exact thing when he talks about time frames. Like, if you claim that we are in a time frame right now of the Lord's return, that is, he will he will come back in this time frame. <laughs> How are you define that? Whether it's a day or an hour or a year. You're still setting a date. Don't you understand that when that time frame ends? Because we're in time, right, Barry? So don't seasons have a beginning and an end to them, right? They, they do have a beginning and an end, right? So when the season is over and no rapture, isn't that the same thing as when May 11th, 2008 passed or what, 2011 passed and, and Harold Camping had, the, had mud on his face? He, he he pinpointed a day and actually an hour I think too you're just, you're pinpointing just something bigger but it's the same exact thing how is what you do any differently than what anybody else does is what I'm saying you are setting dates because you are saying it, it has to happen in this time frame and you and you deny that that's what you're saying but you are saying it well God is in charge of his time frame but we can know it Therefore, it has to happen in this time frame because we know what he, do you see what I'm saying? But see, he, he tricks you. He goes back and forth. 
the, the sad thing here is Barry Scarborough has built a following of people on YouTube, along with all the other guys, J.D. Farag and others, based on the continual false promise that Jesus is coming soon and a constant hyping of what's going on and a constant speculation and, and, and always, always Jesus is coming soon. And it's always within like, you know, months, months or maybe a year or so. It's always out there, just, just slightly out there. So he's got time, but he's built the entire ministry, he calls it, around that. And the problem is, is the second that enough time passes where he's proven wrong again, he has to do a video like this where he backtracks and says, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. You know, God's in control. God's in control of when the time and season is. Barry, um, you should have said that a, a year ago when you were claiming that you knew the time. How come back then guys like me can't step forward and say, hey, Barry, you don't really know when it's going to happen. So just stop saying that because you don't know. And and we can't say that to you. We get mocked. We get yelled at. We get called sinners. I have literally been called a demon for daring to question, not by Barry, but by others, for daring to question you and your timing. And here we still are six years later. Who's a demon? Who's a demon? Who's who's actually telling the truth here? You? So anyway, let's continue. Then you say, well, but then how could we, you know, people thought it was 2015 and some people thought it was 1988 or some of the, okay. Remember in God's timing, these are, these are nothing. These aren't, these aren't, these aren't specks of time in, from his perspective. But okay. Wow. So see again, he's covering again. So if I, if I understand him correctly, he's trying to say, He's trying to say that the whole spectrum of the season that we are in of the Lord's return is really big. I mean, it could be many, many years, decades, hundreds of years, whatever, because it doesn't really matter to God because God sees time as instantaneous, right? I mean, time goes by super fast for God. Um, wrong. Time doesn't go by at all for God. God is not bound by time at all. A trillion, billion, gazillion, trillion, billion years is is nothing. So he has no time. He's not in Narnia time. Well, we're in a different time. He is not in time. He sees the whole thing. Anyway, so what Barry's basically saying is the time frame of his return, golly gee, it could be just like this massive time frame of thousands of years or hundreds or dozens or so, pick a number. And, you know, since it's God's time and not ours, then... It really isn't a long time. So then, then, okay, Barry, then it, could it be another 2,000 years? Could it be another 2,000 years, Barry? Yes or no? Answer it honestly to yourself. Yes, the answer is yes. It could be another 2,000 years. So then why are you hyping it? If it's just as likely to be 2,000 years from now, because in God's eyes, that's no time, as it could be next year or this year, because to God, it's all the same, then what are you hyping for? Well, I know why you're hyping, Barry, because you won't get any visitors to your website or to your YouTube channel or to your blog or to your Facebook or whatever else you're marketing yourself at. No one would listen to you. No one's going to listen to you. A, 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 just a guy from Missouri who's a CPA, uh, you'll, you'll live back in anonymity because nobody cares about that message. They want to hear, Barry, tell us the new thing today. Tell us something new that encourages us, that makes us believe Jesus is coming soon, maybe today, tomorrow, or whatever. I want to hear the news from your perspective. But if you do that, then eventually you run out of time and you got to backtrack. So you're caught in an endless cycle of this. Is that good for the church? Is that what God wants? Does God want an endless hype-induced feedback loop? It goes around in circles like this, constantly promises that don't come to pass, promises that, is that really edifying to the church? Be honest. What does that do for the church? What edification does that give us? 
How does that build up the church? I, I want an answer to this. How does constantly being promised something that never comes to pass? Like your boss comes to you, Barry, and says, hey, man, based on the signs of a good economy this year, based on the signs of our company doing really well, I'm going to give you a giant raise very soon. I'm going to give you a giant raise very soon. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks, boss. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I mean, because all the signs are there. We have high profits. We have satisfied customers. You've met your quota. I mean, you're going to get a big raise very soon. Hey, Barry, how long would it take if he says that and then two months go by and no raise and, and then another month goes by and still no raise? And you go to me and say, hey, hey, boss, I thought I was going to get a raise soon. Yeah, 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 you will. I promise you'll get a raise soon. The signs are there. You know, it, it wasn't as soon as I thought, but it'll be soon. Okay, okay. You know, another three months goes by, no raise. Hey, Barry, at what point would you finally start saying, this guy is a liar. He is stringing me along. Wouldn't you start saying that? How is it that you're not doing the same thing to all the Christians that watch you and not to mention the lost, which is what I'm actually worried about? Because you know what, Barry? I have a feeling a lot of the Christians who watch you, they want you to lie to them. They want you to string them along because this is a this is fun and entertaining, apparently, to people. But we've spoken on previous videos how the signs have been unlike there have unlike they've been since the dawn of time. So these are signs that are coming to pass that are either much more significant or simply coming to pass for the first time. So we know from prophetic scripture that we're in that time frame and the mega sign that any, I shouldn't say any, 99% of, of born again believers would tell you is the return of Israel and it's prophesied all through the Old Testament. Just real quick, there is not one single mention of Israel having to be reborn as a nation in order for Jesus to come back. Not one single mention of it. Zero. The Old Testament talks about Israel coming back to the land after the Babylonian and Assyrian captivities, and they did. They did. God promised those literal Israelites that were literally in captivity to the Syrians and the Babylonians. And if you read all the language of the coming back to the land, it's talking about being captives. Was Israel ca in captivity prior to 1947, Barry? No, they were not. They were just spread all over the place. And they still are. They're, they're, none of them were in captivity and got out of slavery and brought back to their land. And in, in anyway, I'm not going to get into it, but, but no, Barry, no, that is not a sign, period. That is a Hal Lindsey invention from 1970. Nobody had ever even thought of it until it happened, and then Hal Lindsey put the pieces together. And we all know how well that worked for Hal Lindsey. He is 97 years old and still saying the same stuff. But, you know, that's, that's who you take your cue from, I guess. Um, the return of Israel and the, the starting of the fig tree generation. Yeah, the fig tree is not a sign of the end of the, of the world. Go look it up, everyone that's watching. Jesus never stated, when you see the fig tree blooming, that's a sign of my coming. Never said that. Never said that. That's a Hal Lindsey invention. And, okay, how about we just go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt? Let's say Israel had to be back in the land before Jesus came back. Why couldn't they be back in the land for 2,000 more years before Jesus comes back? Where's the date on that? Are you date setting? Are you going to say that there's a date that that has to run out? The timing of, of them being back in the land has to run out? You can't run out before Jesus comes back? Or is that what you're saying? Because you're date setting again. Which is, which is largely and significantly within uh, Christian circles understood to be the time when Israel is regathered. <laughs> So I wanted to talk about this season. Let's. <clears throat> and you're wrong again, Barry. It is not largely in Christian circles. This is a brand new idea. Again, literally invented by Hal Lindsey and then popularized through the Left Behind books. And it's really not well accepted by very many Christians. I mean, it's only recently you guys have hyped this to death because we're hitting milestones. 
I guarantee you we'll hit 2019. It'll be 71 more years, and no one will say a word about the 70th anniversary of Israel anymore. Suddenly, that won't even have mattered, <laughs> just like all the other years. Let's intelligently talk about this season. There's no intelligence here at all, by the way. Because we have a lot of reference points within Scripture to go to. In, in most importantly, we have Psalm 90, verse 10. Psalm 90, verse 10. So it, it talks about a generation being set. What, what are you going to do, Barry, when, when these years pass and nothing happens? You, no, it does not say a generation. Hang on. 70 years, and if by strength it's 80. 10. Psalm 90, verse 10. So it, it talks about a generation being 70 years, and if by strength it's 80. Lie. That is a lie. You just lied. You just flat out lied. It does not say a generation is 80, 70 or 80 years. I, I, I'm just, I'm so sick and tired of people getting on YouTube and lying. And flat out just lying. Uh, I'm so mad, I can't even, okay. All right, got to calm down. <laughs> the days of our years are 60 and 10 or 70. And if by reason of strength of our, of us, they are, they are 80. And it's soon cut off and we fly with it. This is nothing about a generation there, Barry. It says that's the length of a person's lifetime. That's clearly what that says. It does not say it's the length of a generation. You're assuming that the length of a person's lifetime is roughly the length of a generation. That's an okay assumption to make. Just quit telling people that that's what it says. Do you know what the word says means, Barry? It means it's actually in there in words. Otherwise, it's interpretation, not says. It doesn't says any of that. Sorry for being mad, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired of people lying and getting away with it. You're not going to get away with it anymore. Somebody's going to say something. The fig tree generation was discussed by Jesus in the book of Matthew, well, in, in all the Gospels. And Goodness gracious, no, it wasn't. The fig tree generation, it doesn't even exist in the Bible, right? So look at that. I, 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 you know, fig tree generation. Let's see, KJV. There are no concordance results for fig tree generation. Well, goodness sake, that means it wasn't discussed. Let's go back here. Let, let's see. Let's look at this again. All right. Go to that verse. Oh, gosh. Here's what Jesus actually said. Ready? He says all kinds of signs up here. Okay. If they shall say to you, behold, it is in the desert, go not forth, wherever the carcasses, you know, the moon will not give her light, the stars fall, there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Da, da, da. Okay, these are all signs. Now, Learn a parable of the fig tree, or I'm going to tell you a metaphor here. When the fig tree is tender and puts forth, forth leaves, you know summer is nigh. So likewise, likewise, when you shall see all these things. What does that mean? That means in the same manner, when you see all these signs up here, these things he just said, you'll know it is near. The kingdom is near even at the doors. He doesn't say... When the fig tree blooms, that's a sign of the end. When the fig tree blooms, that's a sign of my coming. Or when the fig tree blooms, it's a sign of my kingdom. And that generation will... Not even close. You guys have to stop reading Hal Lindsey and read the Bible and just believe what Jesus actually says, okay? Because you guys are going to get to the end of whatever figment of your imagination a generation is, and then you're going to be left with your mouths hanging open, and you're going to have nothing. And you're going to have people going, what, what, do, you're going to have people basically saying, what did you do to me all these years, Barry? Lie? Yes. And the generation will not pass away until all these things have come to pass. So he's speaking in these texts both to the Jewish audience as well as to the, to the soon to come Gentile audience, which is why I'm always amazed at people that go, oh, I've got it figured out, and Jesus is going to return on, you know, Monday morning at 6, 17 a.m., you know, and it's like... Hey, Barry, I'm always amazed that people like you can say, hey, Jesus, I've got it all figured out, because you've got videos where you say that. You say, we've got it all figured out. you got a video that's actually titled, We Can Know the Time Frame. We Can Know the Season. 
You did a whole thing last year before the Revelation 12 debacle that blew up in your face and said, all these people that um, say we can't know the day or the hour, they're all nuts. They're all crazy. We can know the day or the hour, kind of, maybe the season. They get video after video. Say You just said it in this video that we can know. So I'm amazed that you can keep saying that. And, and you are explicitly, if you know, implicitly, if not explicitly, stating right now that we are the generation that saw the fig tree, Israel become a nation, it's going to last 70 or 80 years, and then we're done. You just said that. I'm amazed that people can say that. How, how dare you criticize people for picking a, a date and a time when you pick a season? They're, they're the same thing. It, this is so complex. I would just ask you and, and really challenge you as a believer in Christ to realize the complexity of all of it. One Interesting that now you're talking about how complex it is. I don't think I've ever heard you say any of this. And by the way, I've watched 90% of your videos, so I know what you say. I don't think you've ever used that term. Hey, guys, this is really complex. Hey, you know what I think you're doing? I'm going to predict something, Barry. Here's what I think. I think you're setting it up so that when you're wrong, you can back off and go, well, you know, this is really complex. In other words, everybody, don't stop watching me. Keep following me. Keep growing my followers. Please, can you keep watching me? Don't, don't leave me. Keep watching. It's complex. Give me a break. <laughs> I, I know what you're doing, man. You know, you want people to listen to you, not because you have a big ego, or I do think you do have a big ego, by the way, because I've tangled with you online. And you're a real jerk to people who don't agree with you, which tells me you have an ego. Um, I think you're addicted to this little following you have. You've got, you know, you just can't believe your darn luck that you, some guy in Missouri has thousands of people watching his videos. It's like, oh, my gosh, people listen to me. I can't even believe it. I got to keep this going, man. This is cool. And it's about a subject that you think is fun and interesting. The rapture. What else? How could this not be fun? We're talking about going to paradise forever and getting out of here and, and having the, the riches and, and eternity of, of God himself. I mean, who wouldn't want that instead of this miserable life, right? So it's really fun to talk about it. I mean, this is what I mean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. This is what I mean by not taking this seriously. <laughs> what God wants uh, us to be doing on this in this life, it's a serious matter. He wants us here doing things, okay? He doesn't want us sitting in the basement wishing we could be taken away. He doesn't want us speculating. He doesn't want us leading on Christians for years, telling them, hey, just hang on a little longer. Keep watching me. I, I swear to you, it's all going to come to an end soon. He does not edify. It's a waste of time. Please stop doing it. This is not your entertainment fun, okay? If you want to speculate about something, Go speculate about who's going to win the Super Bowl next year or this year, okay? That, that's where you should have your speculation fun. Don't go playing around in, in, this, in this field, okay? It's not, it's not for you. For what it's worth, thanks. Thanks for listening.